Hi guys, welcome back for data, uh, to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of uh, some scientific uh, experiments, uh, some sort of some sort of physics experiment, uh, where we're trying to predict the critical heat flux uh, during a given experiment. So if we look at this uh, Wikipedia article, critical heat flux describes the thermal limit of a phenomenon where a phase change occurs during heating. So uh, it's some sort of limit that we're trying to detect using uh, the other features. And you can see each record represents a different experiment conducted by a different author. Uh, so let's hop into the notebook. We're going to use NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. For pre-processing, we're going to use the one-hot encoder, column transformer, and pipeline um, from sklearn. Uh, that's to build the, the whole pipeline for the model. And then we'll use a random forest regressor. Uh, to actually as the model. Uh, and to evaluate the model, we're not going to do a train test split, we're going to do a k-fold across validation, uh, which should give us some more accurate results. Let's go ahead and import all of this, and we'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. So we can grab the file path up here. Here's the file path of the CSV file. I'm just going to paste that in, and we can take a look. I'll also look at data.info so we can see uh, if we have any missing values. No missing values, uh, and it looks like we only have these two object columns, which are these two, right? Uh, so we'll have to encode them, although I may not end up using the author column because I want to try to build a model that's sort of uh, uh, independent of who is doing the, the experiment. All right? I want just, just to use uh, these features, and at the end here, this is CHF for critical heat flux, so this is the uh, target column that we're trying to predict. All right, let's start pre-processing. So this initial pre-processing that we're going to do is probably very minimal. We're just going to drop the necessary columns. So I'm making a function called preprocess inputs that takes in a data frame. It's going to make a copy of it. Uh, and then we'll, we'll start by just dropping the ID, uh, which is this column here. We don't need that because it's just a duplicate index column. And the author column I'll also drop for the reason I said. Um, so df equals df dot drop id and author from axis one, which is the column axis. So drop id column, uh, id and author columns. We'll say. Okay. So uh, then we'll return the data frame, but instead of returning the whole thing as one, I want to sp uh, just take a moment to split off our target column from the rest of the data. So I'm going to split the data frame into x and y, where y is going to be uh, the column we're trying to predict, which is the CHF column here. Uh, so it has that long name. Uh, copy that, paste it in. And then x is all the rest of the data. So I'm going to drop that column. Uh, from axis one, and then we're going to return x and y. Uh, and we'll get them back over here. So x and y are coming from pre-processed inputs. And we're going to pass in data as the input to the function. So now x is basically the fully pre-processed data. Uh, the, one, the nominal column here we're going to take care of within the pipeline. Uh, and we're not going to scale the data. Uh, if we were going to scale it, we do it in the pipeline. But because we're doing a random forest model today, uh, there's a tree-based model that does not need scaling. So let's uh, proceed by building the pipeline now. So I'm going to create a function called build pipeline. I guess I could call it build model actually. And this is just going to set up the pipeline. The reason I'm making it a function is because we want to build a bunch of them because we're doing cross-validation. Uh, so we're going to train a new model on I mean, technically, we could use the same model and just refit it each time, but I'm going to build a new one each time. So uh, to build this, we're going to need our final pipeline. So let's call that model. Uh, and this specifies the steps we have to perform before doing the training. So at the end, we're going to have our regressor, which is a random forest regressor. That's the actual model. And we'll give it a random state as well so we can reproduce the results. Uh, and then before that, we need to make sure that the data is in the proper form to be fed into the random forest. So what that means is we have to do something about this geometry column. 
Right now it is a nominal feature. We can verify that by looking at the unique values. So x uh, sub geometry dot unique. And we have three values. So this is a nominal feature, which means uh, it has more than two values and there's no inherent ordering between them. So when we're doing a nominal feature, we should use one hot uh, encoding. So we'll get the dummies for that to see what that will look like. A pandas.get dummies will show us what a one hot encoding looks like. Basically each uh, each example gets um, encoded as a vector with all zeros and a single one, uh, where the one represents the original value of that example. So here we had all tubes, at the end we had all plates. Now you can see we have ones here for tube and ones here for plates. Um, so we're not going to use that function, we're actually going to use a one hot encoder object which does the same thing, it just takes care of it for us. Uh, and this comes from sklearn. Uh, however, we can't just put it right there into the pipeline because we want to make sure we understand which columns to apply the one hot encoding to. So we're going to set this up inside its own sort of sub pipeline. Uh, so a pipeline whose only step is a one hot encoder. And we're going to call this our nominal transformer because it will be used to transform the nominal column. In here, I'm just going to include two arguments, sparse equals false, so we don't get back a sparse output, and also um, a handle unknown equals ignore. So the reason I'm specifying this is because uh, if we're doing a cross-validation and for some reason all, I mean, it's unlikely because I think the I think the class distribution of this column is fairly even. Let's just make sure. So dot value counts. All right, it's, it's, it could happen because we have only 48 examples in plate. It's unlikely, but let's say all the 48 values ended up in the test set when we did our little split with the cross validation. In that case, uh, the one hot encoder would not even make a column for it, right? So it would look, it, when we evaluate it on the test set, it would say what is this value and it will throw an error. But by doing handle unknown equals ignore it won't throw an error, it will just ignore that value. Alright, now we're almost ready to plug this in but we need one step, one more step to show, uh, tell the model which columns to apply this nominal transformer to. So we're going to call this our preprocessor. And this is going to be a column transformer object which does just that. It allows us to specify some transformers and then specify which columns to apply the transformers to. In this case, we only have one transformer, which is our nominal transformer. Uh, we're going to give it a name as well, which will be nominal. And we're going to apply it to only one column, which is the geometry column. Right, That's our one-hot column. All right, uh, And then we just have to make sure to include remainder equals pass-through here. Uh, what this does is uh, if we don't enable this, if we don't put this, uh, then once uh, the column transformer is applied, only the columns that were actually transformed by it will pass through to the next step. Uh, so by doing remainder equals pass through, all those columns that were not one hot encoded uh, will still be present in the data frame. Okay, uh, and now we can just pass the preprocessor into here. Let's give that a name as well. And this is it. This is the full model. Let's just return it at the end. All right, so we've built the model, or at least the function to build it. Now we can start training. So we're going to do k-fold cross-validation, which basically just takes the whole data set and divides it into k different sections. Uh, and before we do this, I'm actually not sure if sklearn automatically shuffles the data when using kfold. So I'm actually going to look at this, look at the docs for it. Shuffle, uh, by default, it's false. Whether to shuffle the data before splitting into batches, note that the samples within each split will not be shuffled. All right, since it doesn't shuffle it, I'm going to go and do that myself. Um, it's important to shuffle the data before training. I could just enable shuffle equals true, but why don't we do it up here? So right before we split the data, we'll shuffle the data set. And so that's going to be df equals df.sample. And we're going to sample all of the data without replacement, which is the same as shuffling. 
So we'll set the fraction to 1.0 to sample 100% of the data, and we'll give it a random state so we can reproduce the results. And that will just shuffle these around. You can see they're not all in the same uh, order now. OK, um, so it's been shuffled. Now kfold um, basically splits the data into k different um, sections. So in this case, k is called n splits. Uh, and we're going to set it to 5, which is the default. Now, that'll split the data into five different uh, sections. Let's, uh, this is actually our kfold object right? from sklearn. That just does it for us. We'll call it kf. Um, and so this will split it into five different sections and provide index indices for each section. And what we do then is uh, we, we use each section as a test set using the other four sections as the train set. And we, we build a different model for each section. So using a different section as a test set each time, uh, we will, here, let me see if I can find a good picture of it. Uh, yeah, here it is, look. This is what it looks like. Uh, you may have seen this before. The test set is the blue one. And each time on each run, we're using a different uh, test set using the all the other uh, s sections as the train set. Uh, this is the case where k equals 4. We're doing k equals 5. Okay, so here's our kfold object, and we can call its split function once we've created it to split our x. Um, and this split function allows us to iterate through for train index and test index in the split uh, the split function of what it returns. Let's just print this out to see the test index each time. So you can see each time it tells it gives us indices for the test set. You see the first run it gives us 0 through 372. On the next run it gives us 373 through uh, 745. On the next run it gives us 746 through uh, 1118. And each time uh, this being the test set all the rest of the data will be used as the train set. So we can get the indices we need using these two values. So what I'm going to do is for each run, uh, we're going to create a model using our build model function. Uh, and then we're going to fit the model to the train set. And I guess we can define this up here. X train uh, will be X evaluated, or sorry, uh, indexed at, with iloc will index at a, at a with an index. Uh, we, so we need a row indexer and a column indexer. For columns, we're using all columns. But for rows, we're going to use this train index that we pass in. X test is the same thing, but with test index. Y train is going to be y.iloc train index. We don't have to specify columns here, because uh, it's just one dimensional. And y test is the same thing using the test index. So now th we, we get the train and test sets based on the split each time. And then once we've, we've defined those, we can build the model and fit it to the train set. Um, and here I want to calculate the RMSE for the model, which is the root mean squared error. So up here, I'm going to create a empty list called RMSEs which will be the RMSEs for each run, and then we'll take the average RMSE at the end to get a, a good sense of our model. So um, we build the model, we fit it, and then we evaluate. Uh, we'll get a set of predictions. So pred equals model.predict on x test. And then we'll calculate the RMSE, which is the root mean squared error. So first we take the error, which is the uh, y test minus, I'll call it y pred actually y test minus y pred, which are the, the errors for each training example. And we're going to square them so that we get them all positive. Uh, and then we take the mean to get the average or the mean squared error. And then we take the square root to get the root mean squared error. So this is our RMSE for this, for the, this particular model. And then we're going to append it to our list of RMSEs up at the top. Then uh, when we're done, we can we can make this final RMSE, which is the mean of our RMSEs list. So each time we get a new RMSE, and then we take the final one to be the, the average of them all. 
All right, let's run that. And that should build, it finished, it built all five models and then took the average. So now if we print out the, the final RMSE, we display it to two decimal places uh, and we can format this. Oh, hold on, this should be still being quotes. We'll format it using the RMSE, uh, final RMSE. We end up with an RMSE of 0.63. So if we look at Y test, we look at the distribution of Y test. Uh, the minimum here is 0.9, the maximum is 13, and uh, the median is 3.3. So considering this scale, you could see this distribution sort of. Uh, we could plot a histogram actually, probably be better. Dot plot. Oh, uh, was a kind is hist. Uh, you can see the distribution a little bit better. Um, in this case, the RMSE is 0.63. So our average error is about this much, like this little bit right here. So that's fairly good. Yeah, based on the whole distribution, having an error of 0.63 is, is not too bad of a model. Um, it could always be better. I, you know, we didn't do any hyperparameter optimization or anything like that. We didn't even do model selection. We just focused on a random forest model. So there may be a better fit we can achieve. Uh, but that will sum up today's video. I just want to check one more thing before we, we end, which is all the RMSEs. You can see we have different RMSEs based on the different splits. So we actually got higher up here, lower down here. So it's uh, good to take the average so that we can see sort of uh, across all splits uh, what, what we got. All right, and that will sum up today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.